So far in Python, all of our programs only work with the terminal. We take input and print output all in one place. But of course, programs can use all kinds of input and output. Today, we're going to learn how to interact with text files in Python. And in a later unit, we'll learn how to make games and graphics. OK, before you start accessing a file, you'll need a file to work with. In your project folder, in the same folder as your Python file, create a file ending with the extension .txt. That makes it a text file. Remember your file name for later on. Inside of the text file, put some data to access. In this case, I'll just put a few words. Don't forget to save your file. Back inside of your Python code, you can create a file object using the open command. This command takes two arguments. The first is the name of the file in a string. In this case, that would be data.txt. The second argument is the mode. There are four main modes, read, write, append, and update. Let's start with the read mode. Put R for the second argument to open in read mode. To access the file object, you'll need to store it inside of a variable. A simple name like my file is fine. Whenever you open a file, you always have to close it, whether you're reading, writing, appending, or updating. Do that by using the dot close command on the file object. A good practice when opening files is using the with statement. Write with, then the open command, then the word as, and a variable name for your file object. You can start a block on the following lines and put all of the file related code inside. When using the with statement, you don't need to manually close the file because the statement does that for you, even if your code crashes. So far, we've been working with looping statements in this unit, but the with statement is just like a regular block, and it only runs once, so don't mix things up. There are a few options for retrieving data from the file. First is the .read command. Calling read on the file object will return the entire contents of the file. If you print that out, you can see the entire file was returned in one string. Also, it printed it out on two lines with only one print. Interesting. Let's see what's causing this weird two-line behavior. The command repr, or repr, will give you the string representation for any object. If we use this on a string, it'll take out any formatting and show us what's really being stored. When printed out, you can see that it is one string, but there's this weird backslash n in between the two lines for some reason. This is called an escape character, and those let you print certain special symbols and characters. Backslash n means new line. There are many more escape character sequences out there, and they all start with a backslash. If you think about it, since a string is just a list of letters, a text file is just a giant list of letters, and every line break, or enter, in that file is stored as a new line character, or backslash n. What happens when we modify the data.txt file to just be five line breaks, and then rerun the program? It prints out five new line characters, just like expected. Remember that that's how you break up text for later on. You can also read a certain number of characters at a time by giving the read command a number. Here, I print the first five characters on one line, and then the next five characters on the next line. The read lines command takes every line of the file and separates them into a list. Let's say you want to capitalize each line in the file and then print that back out. You can write for every line in lines, print line.capitalize. In the terminal, you can see it did print out capitalized, but for some reason we have an extra space. If you print the representation of each line, you can see it still has that new line character. Using the strip command will get rid of that. If you're looping over each line, you can actually just use a for loop on the file object itself. No need to use the dot read lines command. Just like lists, the file object is iterable, or able to be stepped through piece by piece. Therefore, we can say for every line in my file, print out that line, or whatever you want to perform. If you want to read one line at a time, you can use the read line command. Calling this repeatedly will just return the next line down the file.
so that's how you can read from a file. Let's switch the mode to writing. Use the letter W instead of R as the mode argument. Using write mode creates a file with a name you specify. If there's already a file with a name you give, Python will delete the old file and create a new one. When in write mode, all of the read commands become unusable, so you have to use write commands. I'll keep the name data.txt to show you how it deletes the old file. The write command will add what you give it into the file. Calling this command more than once just adds more onto the file. If you want to start a new line, you have to use the new line escape character to make one. The write lines command is just like the opposite of the read lines command. You can use it to write an entire list of strings at once. Unfortunately, it doesn't automatically insert new line characters after every item in the list. You'll need to add new line characters wherever you want the line breaks in your list. You could also use a for loop and add a new line character for every line you want to write. Like this. Use A in the open command to use append mode. Append mode is very similar to write mode, except instead of deleting the file if it exists, it adds on to the end of it. It will also create a file with the name you specify if it doesn't already exist. You can use both write commands in append mode, but not the read commands. Update mode is what it sounds like. You can both read from a file and write to it, so both read commands and write commands work in this mode. Use R plus to open a file in update mode. Reading will start from the beginning, and writing will start from the end. Writing changes the position of the file, so if you read and then write, and then try to read again, you'll need to move the position back to where you were. In this example, I read one line, print that out to the terminal, and then write one more line back to the file. Here's the output. You can use the tell and seek commands on the file object to find your position in characters and move your position. Because of these reasons, it's pretty hard to use update mode easily. Instead, you should open a file in read mode, extract all the data you need, and then open the file again in write or append mode, and then write or add all the data you need. When you do this, you should have two separate with statements. OK, now that we have an idea of how file objects work, let's go over a few examples. In my data file, I have a list of 100 numbers separated on a different lines. This program finds the total of all of the numbers, the average, and the smallest and largest numbers in the file. Then I print all of the data out in the terminal. I do this with a for loop that iterates over the entire file. Since the number is returned as a string, I first had to cast it to a number, and then I could append it to a list and add it to the total. When I'm done accessing the file and the with statement ends, I find the average by dividing the total by the length of the list and the largest and smallest numbers with the min and max commands. And then I print everything out. In this case, I used read mode because I didn't need to add anything or create any files. Nice. In fact, let's make this program not use the terminal at all. Instead of printing, let's create a new file called output.txt. Set the mode to write and change all of these prints to write commands. When I run this program, a new file appears in our working folder, and nothing shows up in the terminal. Instead, our output was written inside of the text file. Cool. I actually generated that list of numbers with a program I wrote. It uses the random module and a for loop that counts to 100. Inside of the for loop, I generate a random number between 1 and 5,000, cast it to a string, add a new line character, and then write it to the file. It's that simple. I used write mode to create the file because I didn't need to read or modify anything. Now that you have an idea of how File.io works in Python, give it a try yourself and solve some new problems. See ya, code dog out.